Good morning, everyone. Welcome to episode 13 of the Willow Co. Crafts podcast, a podcast about knitting and sewing and my other crafty endeavors. My name is Emily, and you can find me on both Ravelry and Instagram as Willow Cove Crafts. Today is Sunday, October 31st. It is Halloween, and I am coming to you from just outside of Madison in Verona, Wisconsin. It has been three weeks since I last recorded, and we have had a busy few weeks. I had to go back and look at my planner to see all of the things we'd done because three weeks is not a ton of time, but it feels like forever ago that I recorded last. Um, since then, looking back, uh, I went to my friend's baby shower a couple weeks ago where I gave away some of the little baby gifts that I have been making. And I think um, it's my friends Kayla and Matt. They're having their first baby in December. And I really think that they loved them. Um, and that was so nice to see uh, something that I had made being so well appreciated. Um, and as a reminder, I made them that little uh, bunny bonnet. It's called the Mimi bonnet. I talk about that in my last episode. And then I will talk a little bit later about the second gift that I gave them. So we did that. Um, and then the big thing is that Dan and I went on vacation to visit his grandparents. His his whole family was there, but we were at his grandparents' house in um, Pennsylvania. I forget the actual town that they live in. Uh, his grandparents kind of live out in the middle of nowhere. They live in the mountains. Um, and so we went to his grandparents' house for a week and then his parents and his brother were there as well, along with his brother's family. And uh, yes, it was a great time. Dan and his family would go hunting in the evenings, which uh, is not really my thing. So I would just stay back and I got a lot of knitting done while I was there. Um, and it was very beautiful. Again, they live uh, in the Appalachian Mountains and so I grabbed some footage of where we were staying so I will include that at the end if you are interested. Um, and then the other thing we did was just last night we went to a Halloween party at our friend's house and I'm gonna include some footage of this as well. So we have this couple that we are friends with and they throw a Halloween party every Halloween and every year has a new kind of horror adjacent theme. And so this year it was space themed and they, and this is why I want to put it in some video because I just don't have words for it. They go all out with their decorating. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. They decorate their whole house to this theme. It takes them weeks. Like they really commit <laughs> to decorating for this Halloween party. And everyone is supposed to dress to the theme. So again, it was space themed. And so everyone there had space costumes. Dan and I were a little late. We did not have Halloween costumes as of yesterday morning and again we'd been traveling so we didn't really sort out our costumes before we left and then we got back from Pennsylvania yesterday morning and then all afternoon we were kind of going to a couple different shops and kind of scrambling to put together a costume and we ended up going as Xenon and Protozoa and if you are unfamiliar with that reference uh, Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century, was a Disney Channel original movie from the 90s. So if you are a 90s kid like me and had cable and liked to watch the Disney Channel, you probably remember that movie. So 
I'll put some pictures in and some video of the decoration so you can see just how insane this uh, party decor was. It was very impressive. We had a really great time. And yes, you can also see our fun costumes that we somehow managed to scrounge up from Goodwill and Target. Before we get started into the crafty content, I have a small bit of administration to do. I have had to once again redraw for the 100 subscriber giveaway that I ran a couple episodes ago. I have at this point drawn for two winners and have not heard back from either of them. So I have drawn another winner and hopefully third time's the charm. So the new winner, and I'll definitely put it in the show notes, but I'll try to remember to put it on the screen as well. The new winner is, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, but it's Valerie Genico. It, your last name looks like it might be French. I'm guessing, but uh, Valerie, it's spelled Genicot or Genico. Um, and she had responded, and again, to enter that 100 subscriber giveaway, I had asked what you are most looking forward to knitting this fall. And she had said, I intend to finish three pairs of socks so that I can cast on a new one. And I want to knit a ranunculus out of Plotulopi. So Valerie, I have responded to your YouTube comment to let you know that you are the new winner. But if you happen to see this first, please get in contact with me either on Ravelry or Instagram. Again, my username is Crafts, or you can send me an email at willowcovecrafts at gmail.com so that I can get your shipping information and send out your prize to you. Thank you so much for entering. Moving along, I am hoping to start a semi-regular new segment called What Am I Wearing? Um, if you are a returning viewer, you will know that the last couple episodes I have been complaining that we here in Wisconsin have been having a very warm fall. I've been pretty much exclusively wearing t-shirts. It's been pretty hot, uh, but in the last couple weeks, the temperatures have finally dipped and I think knitwear season is here. And I've finally been able to start wearing some of my handmade woolen items. Um, so without further ado, um, my cardigan is store-bought. Uh, I did not make this. I, um, Definitely do not have enough sweaters in my wardrobe, hand knit sweaters in my wardrobe to completely get rid of all of my store bought sweaters. Hopefully someday I'll have a huge selection of hand knit sweaters and I won't need to purchase any more store bought sweaters, but today is not that day. Uh, but I am wearing a hand knit shawl and um, I had to go back and look at the uh, specifics about this shawl. It's not one I wear a ton. Um, if you've watched before, you maybe know or have heard me mention that I am much more of a neutral, muted color type person. And this shawl is definitely not that. Um, the colors are pretty vivid. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily put these colors together these days. Um, but anyways, this is the Sherbert Fountain Shawl by Amba O'Brien. And this was maybe the second or third shawl I ever knit. And I knit it quite a while ago. I think it's probably been about eight years since I made this. And uh, my tastes have definitely changed, like I mentioned. Um, I do really still like this orange, but this, I tend to not make garments or shawls out of super heavily variegated yarn. Um, I think it's beautiful, it's just not, uh, 
not really my to my taste these days and that's fine um but I do think that this shawl looks very uh, festive for the Halloween season. And so I tended to wear this one day a year on Halloween, which today happens to be Halloween. And so I've come to kind of consider this to be my Halloween shawl. I think it looks very, you know, pumpkin-y, obviously. So I tend to wear this with a black shirt on Halloween. Um, the yarns. If you are curious, I just went and looked them up. The orange is Hedgehog Sock in the Copper Penny colorway. And again, this is a very old shawl. I have no idea if this yarn is available anymore. I definitely know that Hedgehog is available, but I couldn't tell you if they still make this colorway. Uh, but it's a beautiful orange with little flecks of green in there and, and the contrasting color I definitely know is not available anymore this is cyborg craft room a sparkulate in the enchanted forest colorway and um the dyer behind cyborg craft room passed away a couple years ago at this point so obviously you are not able to purchase that yarn anymore, sadly. Um, I have quite a few skeins of hers that I am hoarding in my stash. Uh, they're very special and they're very beautiful. Um, and it is a sparkle yarn. That's the other thing. I tend to not put sparkles in any of my garments, except for socks. I will make sparkle socks. Again, it's just not really my style anymore but sherbert fountain by amba o'brien knit many many moons ago and yes i like to wear it on halloween because it feels quite festive so today's the day to wear the pumpkin shawl as far as knitting content goes today, I have three works in progress to show you and I have shown all of them on the podcast before. So you'll have seen these before if you are a returning viewer. Um, I have no finished objects this week. I'm getting pretty close on a couple things. So hopefully next episode, I will have some finished objects to show you. But anyways, to start off, I am working on a pair of socks for my mom for Christmas. I am knitting them out of the Regia 4-ply. This is the Arnie and Carlos design line in color 3760. That Regia yarn um, is a standard 75% wool, 25% nylon. And I've been showing these for a couple episodes now, but I, since last time, well, let me show you. This is the yarn in the ball. These are, again, for my mom for Christmas, and they're pretty traditional Christmas colors, obviously. And I didn't get a ton of work done on these, um, you can see my marker where I was last time, and so I'm maybe a little over halfway done with the leg of the sock. This is the second sock. I have the first one completed, and yes, I tend to keep socks in my purse and kind of knit on them when I'm out and about, but since... We were on vacation this week and I spent most of that week kind of inside. I just didn't work on my socks a ton, but that's fine. Hopefully um, over the next couple weeks, I will uh, get some more work done on these and finish them up. I'm not putting any pressure on myself, but I'm really hoping these are done by next episode and that they will be ready to gift for Christmas. So, fun, festive Christmas socks. 
Um, I guess I can go through the logistics of the sock. I am doing a 72 stitch sock. My mom really likes when her socks are a little roomier. Typically for myself, I would do 64 stitches, but I do 72 for her. I do a two by two ribbing and I am using size one Chiaogu needles. Um, I tend to do about seven inches of leg before I move into the heel flap and gusset of the sock. And then my mom has size 10 feet. So I aim for a 10 inch foot on her socks. So those are fun. I love the Arnie and Carlos yarn. I love watching the, you know, kind of self patterning come out as you knit them. I find it very addicting. Uh, to watch these socks grow. So, yes, and then when that's done, I think this is my last bit of Christmas knitting I am going to do this year, so I can spend all of November and December working on things for myself. Next up, I have put some work into my Slip Stravaganza Blanket by Stephen West. I've been working on this project for months now at this point. Um, and this was one of the projects I brought with me on vacation. And the rows are very long. It does not look like a lot of work, but I did spend quite a few hours working on this while I was away in Pennsylvania. And here it is. Uh, last time I recorded, here's my marker, I believe I had maybe done the first row of the teal stripe here, and I have since finished the teal bubble stripe and have started my fourth bubble stripe. So there is going to be a total of 12 bubble stripes. So almost a third of the way done. Let me pull this back so you can get the full effect. This thing is getting very difficult to show on the camera. Um, and it's getting to be a decent size. It covers my lap and keeps me warm as I work on it. The yarn I am using is the yarn that is called for in the pattern, which is the West Wool Tandem. This is Stephen West's DK line of yarn. And it is 10% Texel, 90% Bachlan Merino, so it's a 100% wool. And the colors I am using, I will go through them. So my main color is white peach. The yellow is glow. The blue is glass. The teal is Norway. The pink is rose with a. The white is birch tree. And the red is cardamoma. And then you can see I'm starting to repeat those colors in the bubble section and then I haven't used it yet but it, I, I'm planning on using it soon um, but I have another contrast color which is this gray which I believe this one is called Dutch Sky so slowly but surely this blanket is growing I've mentioned many times but my main goal with this is to not let it kind of stagnate and hibernate I want to keep continuously doing some work on it, uh, but this is more of a long-term project. It's going to be massive when it is done. My last knitting work in progress today is what I have put the majority of my time into over the last few weeks. Um, last episode, I introduced this project. It is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along for 2021, which is called Shawlography, and I have tried to keep up with it. I am failing miserably at keeping to schedule, but I've been working on it 
pretty monogamously. So what can you do? You know, he, uh, one of his little taglines this year is to embrace your pace. And so whenever I'm feeling frustrated that I am behind, I just have been telling myself that I think that's a cute little thing to remind ourselves of when we are knitting, just to enjoy the process. Um, this is a mystery knit along and at this point all four clues have been released so the whole pattern is out there. I will um, show you my yarns first before I show you my project and I'll do um, a little announcement, a spoiler announcement before I show you the project. Um, but my yarns that I am using, I am using the Wool Barn Cashmere Sock Floor Ply four ply base, I can't talk, which is an 80% superwash extra fine merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And I have five colors of that and I can never remember which one is which. So I'm just going to take a guess like I did last time. My first color is called Secrets, which I believe is this purple. I don't know why I'm holding that up. I believe this one is called Secrets. This one is called Pink Sand, which it's blowing out a bit. It's kind of a darker mauve colorway. I would say a medium toned mauve. It's looking very tan on the screen, but it's more pink than is showing up. And what else? I can't even remember the colorway names, let alone which one is which. We've got Smitten, which I think is this one. That one's pretty color accurate. It's a, a tan color. So I believe this one is Smitten. And then we have Pillow Talk which is a gray, a very light gray. This is probably my favorite color of the bunch. I love all of them, but I am a real sucker for gray. I think gray might be one of my favorite colors. And then lastly, we've got Walnut, which again, this is blowing out. I think it looks a lot darker in real life. This is more of a brown. My Lighting is, it's pretty bright out today. So things are kind of getting blown out. If I hold it back, I think, I think that is a lot more color accurate if I take it out of the direct sunlight and hold it back here. So those are my five colors that I have been using. And so um, currently I am on clue three, section, let me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm on section ten. So if you are past that section or if you don't care about spoilers, uh, you can definitely watch this next section. But if you, oops, if you do not want to see uh, my progress, because maybe you're trying to keep yourself a little surprised, um, definitely skip forward. I will try and put a timestamp of when I stop talking about this so that you can move ahead. So again, I'm on clue three, section 10. And I'm about to show the shawl. So move along if you don't want to see it. And here it is. It's very big. It's hard to show. I think it looks really cool. <laughs> um, I can't help but think that it looks a little like a half eyeball. I don't know if anyone else feels that way. Um, and then the other sort of vibe I get from it, um, and I've read a couple people say this, I thought this kind of independently to myself and then I read some comments from other people who said 
the same thing, which I thought was funny. Um, but it looks a little like carnival circus to me. Um, specifically, and I kind of sorted out my thoughts on this, I feel like the I-cord section reminds me of a clown collar. You know, those like big voluminous collars that clowns wear that have like the fabric pleats. Uh, this reminds me of that a bit. And then also this section right here, my contrast is not great between these two, but I feel like these look a bit like party hats, especially with the, the bobble at the top of that triangle. And so those things together, it looks very circusy to me. Um, yes. Clue two, for those of you who have knit this, so clue one is obviously the start and then you knit down through the end of these I-cord edging or I-cord loops. I don't know why I called that an edging. And then clue two was a ton of knitting. That is where I felt like I really got slowed down. I could not believe how much knitting went into the second clue. So clue two starts here after these I-cord loops and you knit down through these bobbles. And then a couple things, you know, we've got that welt section. This took forever. It doesn't look like much, but to make those welts, you have to do 10 rows of knitting along a ton of stitches. Bobbles always take forever. So that took a while. So I felt like Clue 2 had a couple sections where, um, like, surface area wise it is not a substantial part of the shawl but it the technique just takes a very long time but then also clue two had these wedges which i kind of read the instructions and was like oh short row wedges and the rows get shorter how long could that possibly take but this i felt like was the majority of my vacation knitting i was working on these wedges and then you know there's two of them and it just felt like it took forever and then finally clue three I feel like is going a lot faster uh we start with the brioche down here um and I would say I am about halfway done with clue three so hopefully in the next couple days I can start up with clue four I have looked at the instructions for clue four, but I haven't seen any spoilers. So, um, I haven't looked too closely at clue four. I don't, I feel like I can read a knitting pattern, but not be able to mentally picture what those directions will produce. So I've read through the directions. I kind of have a sense of what clue four is doing, but I, haven't put forth much mental energy to try to visualize what it looks like. And I'm hoping that I can at least start that clue before I see any spoilers of what it looks like. Um, and clue four is the last clue. It's the border of the shawl. So maybe this will also be finished the next time I record. I can hope. Two finished objects sounds like a lot. Um, I did want to talk about brioche a little bit. I've mentioned before but brioche is one of my favorite knit stitches I absolutely love it I think it's just so squishy it feels really nice if you have never knit brioche you should definitely try it this is my PSA to you today um Stephen West and I was thinking about this this morning Stephen West always includes a non-brioche option in his mystery knit alongs which is great. Um, however, I feel like he does that because brioche has a little bit of a reputation for being tricky or people are afraid to try it. Um, my personal experience with brioche is that I've never had a problem with it. In fact, one of my very first projects as a brand new knitter was brioche. And, um, 
this was before I was on Ravelry, it was before I watched podcasts, and it was before I got all of these messages that brioche is supposed to be hard. And so I didn't know it was supposed to be hard, hard, quote unquote, and I just knit it. And I was a new knitter. And so I think if as a new knitter, I can sort it out, um, it can't be that tricky. Um, I sincerely apologize if you've tried brioche and you find it hard. Um, I just don't find it that that challenging. So if you haven't tried it or you're afraid of it, um, I would definitely give it a go. It's my personal favorite. I could shout its praises all over the place. I love brioche. Um, a couple of mental tricks I use if, you know, I think brioche is maybe conceptually is maybe a little tricky and that's why people have a hard time with it, but I thought I would share with you kind of my thought process behind it and how I, you know, what mental kind of checks I do to keep my brioche straight. Um, so again, this is two color brioche. You can see um, this is the right side. The purple here is, you know, I kind of consider it the dominant color. Um, and each side has a different dominant color. So then this is the back side and we can see that the dominant color is the pink. Um, and I think of brioche as a type of ribbing. That's essentially what it is. But in two color brioche, again, we've got, depending on what side you look at, a different dominant color. And so the mental checks I kind of go to, and hopefully this is helpful to someone out there, or maybe everyone knows this already. So in brioche, you knit each row twice. And you always start with the same color. Whenever you go to knit a new row, you always start with the same color. So just kind of keep that in mind that you've got a specific order. You always alternate and start with the same color. Purple, pink, purple, pink in this case. And then depending on what side you are on, you know, make a note as to what color is dominant on that side. The dominant color is always knit and the non-dominant color is always purled on a given side. So on the right side here, again, I start with the same color every time. So I'm gonna start with purple. And because purple is dominant, I'm going to knit all of my purple stitches. And I am going to uh, purl my pink stitches when I go to do that pass because purple is dominant, pink is non-dominant. When I go to the back side and knit this wrong side row, start with purple, always start with purple. We're going to purl purple because purple is non-dominant and we're going to knit pink because pink is dominant. So those are kind of the mental checks I do always Make sure you're starting with the same color on every row and pay attention to what color is dominant. You knit that color and what color is non-dominant, you purl that color. And there's some slipping and yarn overs that happen. Um, there's some really great tutorials out there that I definitely recommend you go watch. Uh, but as I'm knitting, if I'm ever kind of wondering like, what am I doing next? Um, I kind of run through those checks to help me figure out so I don't have to constantly be tracking my pattern. I can literally pick this up and kind of figure out um, what to do next based on uh, that kind of sequence of considerations. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's helpful to someone out there. Um, but yes, I'm Excited to finish this so I can work on other things. I definitely consider myself to be more of a lover of traditional type knitting patterns. Um, I like things that are a bit more basic, a bit more, you know, kind of traditional cables, traditional lace, um, things that are more plain. So Stephen West patterns, are very non-traditional. 
So it's fun to do every once in a while. I say that and I have two Steven Mess projects on the go. Um, fun to do every once in a while, but I'm excited to get back to things that I know will be more of a staple in my wardrobe than something like this because you know I will wear this shawl occasionally and again I think kind of a saving grace for me with such a wild pattern is to do it in colors that I really like so you know I've taken this really crazy pattern and have put a more muted color palette on it um, and for that reason I will most likely wear this every once in a while, but I don't think it will be a staple in my wardrobe because it is just a little bit out of the box for me. But I think the mystery knit along, again, is more of a process than anything. I enjoy getting a clue and not knowing what it's gonna look like. Uh, that's most of the fun for me, even if I don't end up wearing the finished object a ton. And then if I really don't ever wear it, I can always gift this shawl to someone who might like it better. Um, but yes, I love this yarn. It's very soft. Um, and I do love this color palette a lot. So I will definitely try and find ways to wear this when it is done. And that is it for knitting content this week. I have a lot of works in progress that I have shown on the podcast that are unfortunately languishing a little bit. I really wanted to keep up with the mystery knit along so that is what I've worked on the most. Um, but again I'm hoping to get back to some of my older projects over the next few weeks once that is finished. Um, Next up, we will move into sewing content. And I pre-recorded a little bit about my finished sewing object this week. I have finished the Thistle Bunny for uh, my friends, Kayla and Matt. And like I mentioned at the beginning, their baby shower was a couple weeks ago. So I no longer have that uh, project in my possession, but I did pre-record a segment to talk about that project and show you uh, all of the little details about it. So I will insert that here. Hi everyone, I am coming to you from the past. Today is October 16th. So um, I'm planning on recording my next episode on Halloween. So not for another two weeks, but I wanted to uh, film a little clip talking about one of my finished objects because I am headed to my friends Kayla and Matt's baby shower this afternoon where I will be gifting them this and I wanted to show it to you before it left my possession. So I've been working on this project for the last couple episodes, so you may have seen it before. Um, I have been working out of this book called Little Traveler by Simone Gooding to make uh, this little bunny pattern. She calls this the Thistle Bunny Pattern, and again, the author of the book is Simone Gooding. And I talked about this last episode, but I started making the bunny to pattern and realized that I just wasn't happy with the size. I was, it, it clearly states it in the pattern how big the finished object is supposed to be, but I don't know, I just, thought that would be enough or I thought that would be fine. And then as I was working on it, I just decided, no, like it needs to be much bigger for me to be happy with it. It just wasn't what I had envisioned. And so I decided to start over and I still use this pattern, but I took all the pattern pieces and I enlarged them by two to get a bunny that was twice as big as what the pattern initially intended. 
and um, because I had to start over, I was on a little bit of a time crunch, and so I decided to uh, kind of simplify the bunny a little bit more than I originally intended. The, I think, most charming part about that little traveler's book is all of the little accessories and little details that the different patterns have, and while those are super cute and I really appreciate them, um, I just didn't have time to complete all of them. Also, I really don't think these patterns in particular are potentially meant for very small children. There's a lot of buttons, um, a lot of like little tiny pieces that I personally would not feel comfortable including on a gift for a baby or a very small child. So I did some adapting. Um, I left some things off, as I said, uh, to make something that I hope is a little bit more suitable for uh, the baby when she starts to get a little bigger and starts playing with toys. Uh, so without further ado, here is my thistle money. And you can imagine, uh, and let me, her legs pivot and her arms pivot, which is really great. And I'm having trouble fitting her on the screen. Uh, but you can imagine that the original pattern was half of the height. So from here to here. And that just wasn't what I was looking for. I wanted, you know, this rabbit's probably as big as the baby will be when she is born, uh, maybe even a little bigger. Uh, but I wanted something that, like, she'll really be able to snuggle with. Uh, a very uh, substantial bunny, if you will. But anyways, to, to go through my materials, the bunny is made out of, uh, I don't think it's 100% wool felt, but it is a wool felt blend. I purchased it. I want to say the company was called Over the River Felt Company. I found them on Etsy. And so I made the money out of this white and then the inside of her ears are pink. Um, and then her dress I made out of some leftover cotton sateen I used to back one of my quilts with. If you go back to my very first episode, I finished my first quilt and this is the fabric I used as my backing and the pattern calls for safety eyes which I I did a bit of research and even though they are called safety eyes they're still not they still can break off and thus become a bit of a choking hazard for a small child so I just decided to embroider some eyes on and then I embroidered her little face um, what else did I do? She does come with a tail. Let me show you her butt. <laughs> um, I decided to leave the tail off. I didn't like, the tail is just made out of the same felt. And if I were to add a tail, I would have wanted it to be fuzzy. I felt like just having a, a felted lump on the back of her butt would look a little weird. And I also didn't want it to impact uh, her sitting or she does stand if I straighten out her legs and kind of position her correctly uh, she will stand up she's pretty sturdy um, and then like I said the way you do the arms and the legs they pivot um, I found the book does not go into a ton of detail about how to sew on the arms and legs to do that it shows you at a high level how to do that, but I was left feeling a little unprepared. And I did find a really great tutorial for how to attach, I think this is called like a hinged limb or whatever you wanna call it, um, that I will try and remember to include below. I, like I said, I'm filming this early, so in two weeks I might not remember to include that tutorial, let me know if I don't and you are interested in it. Um, and that tutorial 
was really helpful. Uh, I tried to attach the legs once before watching the tutorial and it was just so painful, a bit of a mess. And then I watched the tutorial and it was like pretty easy and pretty straightforward uh, the way she has you do it. Uh, the one thing I didn't do from that tutorial, which um, I kind of wish I could have done that, um, and I'll explain. She has you include a button over, you know, you can kind of see that um, there's thread here and that's kind of the, the thing that is securing the arm to the body. And she includes a button at the joint. And the reason for that is that most thread is stronger than most fabric, especially a wool felt fabric that, you know, felt is just kind of matted together. It's not woven in any way. So felt fabric is essentially weaker than a lot of other types of fabric. And so because the thread is stronger than the felt over time, as we, you know, fiddle with this arm, that fabric could cut through and just kind of wear through, or excuse me, the thread could kind of wear through and cut through the fabric and then your arm falls off. Uh, but the button puts a little bit of a barrier between the thread and the arm, so it's less likely to fall off. Again, this is for a baby, and so I didn't want to put any buttons on it for fear that if they fell off, it would be a choking hazard. And I would feel really bad if I supplied my friend's baby with a button and it came undone. Um, but I think I might just tell my friends, like, you know, there's a good chance its legs will fall off someday, but uh, just let me know and I will fix it. And maybe by the time that happens, uh, the kid will be a little bit older and can handle a button on their toy. Um, what else? I did do a little nip tuck on the back of her head. Um, when I sewed the head together, these, and you can kind of see there's this seam here. The seam was popping out a little bit. It looked very square, the back of her head, which makes sense because you're seaming with straight seams essentially. And you know, the spot on these two ends of this seam were like kind of pointed and I thought it looked really weird. Um, so what I did was I was kind of able to like fold it in and then whip stitch back along that seam to smooth it out and make it not so pointed at these two spots. Um, another modification I made, um, the pattern calls for putting pipe cleaner in the ears so that they can kind of be molded and shaped. Again, I felt strange putting anything metal into a child's toy. So I decided to just take the pipe cleaners off and then I kind of ironed down the ears. I pressed them to give them a little bit of a flip forward. This one was pressed a little bit more than this, but I kind of like that. I like when it's a little lopsided. I think it's really cute. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other modifications. This Bissell pattern also comes with a little coat, which um, I had originally intended on making, but uh, for time purposes decided not to. Plus, I thought she looked really cute just in her little sundress. And yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am a little nervous about the longevity of this. I have never made a sewn stuffed animal, and so I hope she stays together. And, you know, like I said, I fully anticipate her limbs to fall off someday. And even like, like this embroidery here, I feel like is a little loose, like the baby could catch her finger in it and rip it out. Um, but everything is fixable, so I think I'm just gonna pass it along and let my friends know that if anything ever happens to it, I can most likely fix 
whatever the problem is. So one last time, that is the Thistle Bunny by Simone Gooding. And I am really excited to pass this along this afternoon at the baby shower. My only sewing work in progress this week, now that I've finished the bunny, um, and I have been traveling, so I haven't sewn a ton over the last couple weeks, but I did pick back up my trippy quilt by Southern Charm Quilts. And I just did a little bit of work on it. Um, I made a batch of blocks. So the way this pattern works and kind of the fabric requirements I had, or the fabric cuts I had, I should say, um, I can make blocks in batches of three. Um, and again, I don't want to give away, it is a paid for pattern, so I don't want to give away the kind of secret sauce of how it comes together, but um, I make three blocks at a time and they kind of go together and use the same fabrics. So uh, you'll see, I'll try to hold these together. Um, you know, these are two blocks and they use the same fabrics, uh, just in a slightly different order. So um, I managed to get a little bit of sewing done um, after I finished the bunny, but before I went away on vacation and I got a batch of blocks done. And so I have my whole stack here. Um, I believe I have nine blocks done. That seems right. So in total, I'm planning on having 25 blocks to do a five by five block quilt. I forgot to mention this is for, this is a baby quilt for my friend Amanda. I have let go of the idea that I will have this quilt done by the time the baby is born. She is due at the beginning of December. So I only have a little over a month before the baby is born, which I don't think I will finish the quilt in that amount of time, but that's fine. He'll be able to use it for a while. Um, but yes, just slowly working away on that. It's kind of hard to show because all my blocks look very similar. Uh, you'll just have to trust me that I am making more of them. Um, what else is I gonna say about this? I am using a jelly roll that I got. It's cotton and steel fabrics. I don't remember what line of fabric it is called. Um, I'll go look that up and put it in the show notes. Um, but I really love this fabric collection for a baby quilt. I think it's, um, I've talked about this before. I don't love things that are like overtly baby. Um, I like things that can like grow a little bit with the child. And so I really enjoy this color palette because, um, you know, it's got the kind of traditional blue in it for a boy, but it's got a bunch of non-traditional elements as well. I think, you know, the black and the white kind of modernize it a little bit. And then we've got some metallic, I don't know if that's quite picking up, but this fabric and a couple of the other ones has uh, some metallic florals in it. Um, and then the blue that is in it is quite dusty and muted instead of that like kind of in your face baby blue. Um, I prefer this shade of blue a lot better. So um, excited to I think it's gonna be a couple of weeks until this is done, but to keep putting those blocks together and then, you know, when you finally sew all of your blocks together, it's so, so, so satisfying. I think putting a quilt top together is maybe one of the most satisfying things in the whole wide world. Um, it's great. So more to come on that one, but this is definitely going to be my focus for my sewing over the next month or two to try and finish this up before the baby gets too big. I definitely don't want 
um, to let this one languish. I would like to get this out to my friend as soon as possible, even if it's not quite before she has her baby. So yes, excited to be back working on this again. I have been doing a lot of garment sewing and then stuffed animal sewing and now I'm like really craving uh, a quilt. So this will fit that bill for sure. And that is everything for me today. If you like this video, please uh, like it down below, subscribe to this channel, come follow me on Instagram, um, comment. I love it hearing from you all. Um, it really makes my day when I uh, hear from you all um, and get to interact with you all. So, uh, yes, I am hoping to record again in two weeks. I'm hoping, you know, I have no travel or anything planned over the next couple months and so I'm hoping to get back into that two-week podcasting schedule so um, I hope that you all enjoy the beginning of November maybe you know do some festive fall things and I will talk to you again in two weeks bye everyone mm -hmm.